This week on Maker Update, a mask that smiles, a one leg robot, dual screen cyber deck, the Pi Mix Maker, infill earrings, and giving your cutting mat a boost. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and it's Maker Update time. I hope you're all doing well and staying engaged with something that's rewarding for you, even if that's just daydreaming about projects. And I have plenty of those for you in the show, so let's get started with the project of the week. Tyler Glale made this LED matrix face mask with an animated mouth that responds to your voice. Best of all, it's pretty cheap and simple to make your own. The most expensive part is this 8x8 flexible LED matrix that runs around $15. You add in a 9 volt battery, an Arduino Nano, a microphone breakout board, and a little DC to DC converter to bring the battery voltage down to the 5 volts needed for the board and the lights. All of those components get stuffed into the mask. The Arduino is basically looking at the microphone volume to decide which frame of mouth animation to display and switches quickly between them. For the cherry on top, Tyler added a smile animation that triggers when he makes a popping sound with his mouth. From what I can tell looking at the code, there's a bit in there called pop detection that triggers whenever the volume reaches the upper limit. So ironically, <laughs> it's possible to activate this when you're yelling at someone. It's a cool project and Tyler does a great job showing each step of the process in his guide and links out to the code on GitHub. I would be curious though to see if there's a less bulky version you could make with something like a trinket and a lipo battery pack. If you're feeling inspired, maybe give that a shot. Now it's time for some news. The UC Berkeley Biomimetic Millisystems Lab released a video showing off their new and improved jumping robot named Salto. This is a one leg robot that can do these crazy high jumps and stick the landing in that satisfying and uncanny way that an Olympic gymnast can. And it's such a weird looking contraption that it's fun to try to unpack everything that's going on. It has that big foot that compresses and extends, but to keep it from falling over to one side or the other, it also has this pair of drone propellers that are constantly correcting its balance. Even crazier, to control its position front to back, it has this vertical spinner with weights on each end that create a kind of gyro stabilization, but also help it to deliberately tip forward and backwards so that it can aim for its target. And for a one-legged, top-heavy robot, it's insanely accurate. I don't know why I love this thing so much, but I recommend checking out the video and I'll link to an interview with one of the lead researchers, Justin Yim. Now for more projects, I caught a great pair of Cyberdeck computer projects on Hackaday. The first one is this little guy from Faceless Tech. It uses a Raspberry Pi Zero, a little screen, and a Bluetooth keyboard. The enclosure is all 3D printed. For power, he's using a pair of 18650 rechargeable batteries. Two things I love about this design, one is the GoPro style hinge used to fold the screen up and down, but what's even cooler is the way they wired the connection to the screen with these paracord wrapped cables and GX12 format aviation connections. Totally unnecessary, but such a great look. The other cool Cyberdeck build I saw is this dual screen design by Dapper Rogue. He's calling this a luggable design and it's modeled after the classic compact portable design of the 80s. This one has a more powerful Pi 4 inside, along with four fans for cooling and a software-defined radio receiver module. To take it even more over the top, the keyboard is all custom made, switch by switch. What really gets me about this one though, aside from the two screens, which are awesome, is the mixture of that orange 3D printed Voronoi patterned interior brackets with the white HDPE outside panels. It's a great looking combo. As some of you know, I'm currently obsessed with a cocktail robotics project. I'm always on the lookout for new solutions. This Mixmaker cocktail machine by a team from the Netherlands, Renz, Rutger, and this, is one of the first designs to catch my attention in a while. The project details are spread out across a Reddit post, a Google Photo album, and a GitHub repo. It's essentially a Pi-based system where the Pi takes orders over a locally hosted interface that you can access from your phone. A concealed stepper motor then pulls your drink along a track as each ingredient is poured into your glass. There's one pump at the beginning of the whole thing for slowly pouring soda, which you don't want to dump out too quickly, but the rest of the ingredients come out of these dispensers where the bottle mounts right on top and then quickly pour out a measure shot right into your cup. To make this style of dispenser work, you usually have to shove a cup underneath to activate it manually. The smart thing this team did was to mount a servo on the back of the cup holder with a linear gear that shoves up into the dispenser to get it to pour out. It's a lot faster than using pumps, and it looks cooler too. But unfortunately, they seem hard to come by in the US. 
On Instructables, Penelope Bolnick shows off a new 3D printed jewelry technique where she uses the infill patterns generated by her slicer software as part of the aesthetic. The trick for this one is just to use a basic solid shape with a whole place for the jewelry hardware. You bring that into your slicer software and set the top and bottom shell layers to zero. This preserves the vertical outline of the shape, but leaves the rest of it as visible infill. The rest comes down to playing with your infill patterns and percentages to get a look that you like. Now for some tips and tools. On YouTube, Will Cogley has a video up that details his history with creating a biomimetic robot hand, what makes it so difficult to do that, and how he's approaching a new design that we'll hopefully see unfold over the next few months on his channel. He already has a few critical pieces to show off, and you'll get a new appreciation for how your hand works. On Tested, Norman Chan has an entertaining video on how he created this laser cut riser for his model making cutting mat. It's a surprising story that evolves into a jigsaw puzzle and an LED lit platform for displaying your models. It's a great design story. In a separate video, Adam Savage talks about why these extended micro forceps are one of his favorite types of needle nose pliers. If you remember the Jamie Heineman toolbox teardown from episode 172, these were also a part of his must have toolkit. On Cool Tools, I have an interview up with Matt Stoltz from Prusa Research. We talk about why the DeWalt DWP611 router is not only one of his favorites, but why it seems to pop up on most DIY CNC router machines. And on Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, he's got a great tip from Bob Netzker on using Sugru Putty for casting things with metal. Also a tip from Punish Props on sculpting with foam clay. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video on understanding motion sensors accelerometers, gyroscopes, magnetometers. You'll get a useful technical description of each and how they differ. You also get a demo of how these can all be put to work for your next project. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. Let me know what you're doing to stay engaged or even just entertained. Uh, you can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.